How's it going everyone? In this video, I'm going to complete the Introduction to HTML course offered on Codecademy. It's a free course and will help you learn the basics of HTML5 and start building and editing web pages. This video is for people interested in learning the basics of HTML or are curious about what the Code Academy course involves. You can follow along with me as I go through the course or you can easily go to the website and run through the tutorial yourself. You don't need anything special, just a computer and internet connection. I know people like watching tutorials on their phone, so if you're with me, let's get straight into it. What is HTML? Welcome to the world of code. Last year, millions of learners from our community started with HTML. Why? HTML is the skeleton of all web pages. It's often the first language learned by developers, marketers and designers and is core to front-end development work. If this is your first time touching code, we're excited for what you're about to create. So what exactly is HTML? HTML provides structure to all the content appearing on a website, such as images, text and videos. Right click on any web page on the internet, choose inspect and you'll see HTML in a panel of your screen. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. A markup language is a computer language that defines the structure and presentation of raw text. In HTML, the computer can interpret raw text that is wrapped in HTML elements. Hypertext is text displayed on a computer or device that provides access to other text through links, also known as hyperlinks. You probably clicked on a couple of hyperlinks on your way to this Code Academy course. Learning HTML is the first step in creating websites, but even a bit of knowledge can help you inject code snippets into newsletter, blog or website templates. As you continue learning, you can layer HTML with CSS and JavaScript to create visually compelling and dynamic websites. But for now, we're going to focus on how to add and modify basic content on a page like text, images and videos. Don't worry if the website looks ugly, we're just getting started. In the code editor, to the right, type your name in between h1 and h1, then press run. HTML anatomy. HTML is composed of elements. These elements structure the web page and define its content. Let's take a look at how they're written. The diagram to the right displays a HTML paragraph element. As we can see, the paragraph element is made up of an opening tag, the content, a closing tag. A tag and the content between it is called an HTML element. There are many tags that we can use to organize and display text and other types of content like images. Let's quickly review each part of the element pictured. The body. One of the key HTML elements we use to build a web page is the body element. Only content inside the opening and closing body tags can be displayed to the screen. Here's what opening and closing body tags look like. Once the file has a body, many different types of content including text, images and buttons can be added to the body. Add a body to your web page using the body element. There you go, fairly straightforward. Click run. HTML is organized as a collection of family tree relationships. As you saw in the last exercise, we placed the P tags within body tags. When an element is contained inside another element, it is considered the child of that element. The child element is said to be nested inside of the parent element. In the example above, the P element is nested inside the body element. The P element is considered a child of the body element and a body element is considered the parent. You can also see that we've added two spaces of indentation using the spacebar for better readability. Since there can be multiple levels of nesting, 
This analogy can be extended to grandchildren, great-grandchildren and beyond. The relationship between elements and their ancestor and descendant elements is known as hierarchy. Let's consider a more complicated example that uses some new tags. In this element, the body element is the parent of the div element. Both the H1 and P elements are children of the div element. Because the H1 and P elements are at the same level, they are considered siblings and are both grandchildren to the body element. Understanding HTML hierarchy is important because child elements can inherit behavior and styling from their parent element. You'll learn more about web page hierarchy when you start digging into CSS. Okay, let's follow through on these instructions. Headings in HTML are similar to headings in other types of media. For example, in newspapers, large headings are typically used to capture a reader's attention. Other times, headings are used to describe content, like the title of a movie or an educational article. HTML follows a similar pattern. In HTML, there are six different headings or heading elements. Headings can be used for a variety of purposes, like titling sections, articles, or other forms of content. The following is a list of heading elements available in HTML. They are ordered from largest to smallest in size. H1, used for main headings. All other smaller headings are used for subheadings. The following example code uses a headline intended to capture a reader's attention. It uses the largest heading available, the main heading element. Let me just read through these instructions and complete these tasks. Below the habitat heading, add a H3 heading that says countries with large brown bear populations. On the next line, add one more H3 heading that says countries with small brown bear populations. Finally, on the next line, add a H2 heading that says media. Okay, that seems to have worked. Divs. One of the most popular elements in HTML is the div element. Div is short for division, or a container that divides the page into sections. These sections are very useful for grouping elements in your HTML together. Divs can contain any text or other HTML elements, such as links, images, or videos. Remember to always add two spaces of indentation when you nest elements inside of the divs for better readability. Instructions. Below the H1 heading that says the brown bear, add an opening div tag. Place the closing div tag after the H3 element that says features. Remember to use your spacebar to add two spaces of indentation when you nest elements. Okay, let's go through this. Attributes. If we want to expand an element's tag, we can do so using an attribute. Attributes are content added to the opening tag of an element and can be used in several different ways, from providing information to changing styling. Attributes are made up of the following two parts. The name of the attribute, the value of the attribute. One commonly used attribute is the ID. We can use the ID attribute to specify different content, such as divs, and is really helpful when you use an element more than once. IDs have several different purposes in HTML, but for now, we'll focus on how they can help us identify content on the page. When we add an ID to a div, we place it in the opening tag. Div ID equals intro. 
add an ID attribute with the value introduction to the divs below the brown bear. Okay. Displaying text. If you want to display text in HTML, you can use a paragraph or span. Paragraphs contain a block of plain text. Span contains short pieces of text or other HTML. They are used to separate small pieces of content that are on the same line as other content. Take a look at each of these elements in action below. In the example above, there are two different divs. The second div contains a P with span self-driving cars. This span element separates self-driving cars from the rest of the text in the paragraph. It's best to use a span element when you want to target a specific piece of content that is in line or on the same line as other text. If you want to divide your content into blocks, it's better to use a div. I'll just work through these You can also style text using HTML tags. The M tag emphasizes text, while the strong tag highlights important text. Later, when you begin to style websites, you will decide how you want browsers to display content within M and strong tags. Browsers, however, have built-in style sheets that will generally style these tags in the following ways. The M tag will generally render as italic emphasis, the strong will generally render as bold emphasis. Take a look at each style in action. In this example, the strong and M tags are used to emphasize the text to produce the following. The Nile River is the longest river in the world, measuring 6,850 kilometers long, approximately 4,260 miles. Line breaks. The spacing between code in a HTML file doesn't affect the positioning of elements in a browser. If you are interested in modifying the spacing in a browser, you can use HTML's line break element. The line break element is unique because it is only composed of a starting tag. You can use it anywhere within your HTML code and a line break will be shown in the browser. Let's have a look at the line break. BR. The code in the example above will result in an output that looks like the following. Add two line breaks after the sentence that ends with least concern. Here are some helpful links to the top questions asked by coders about this exercise. If both break and break with a forward slash are valid syntaxes which one should I use let's have a look at that one there is no consensus on this and either syntax is fine to use happy days why do we need to use two space indentations experienced developers use indentation and vertical spacing to keep their code neat and legible Highly readable code improves maintainability, aids collaborative efforts, and makes for a better developer experience overall. Within our HTML, consistent indentation should be used to illustrate nesting. Our line breaks the standard way of manipulating the position of HTML elements. The answer to this is dependent on the elements you are trying to position 
and can become quite involved. For now, just know that in web development there is a design principle called separation of concerns. This principle guides us to keep our HTML structure distinct from its presentation. Unordered lists. In addition to organizing text in paragraph form, you can also display content in an easy to read list. In HTML, you can use an unordered list tag to create a list of items in no particular order. An unordered list outlines individual list items with a bullet point. The UL element should not hold raw text and won't automatically format raw text into an unordered list of items. Individual list items must be added to the unordered list using the list tag. The li or list item tag is used to describe an item in a list. In the example above, the list was created using the ul tag and all individual list items were added using li tags. The output will look like this. Okay, let's move on to ordered list, which is numbers. Ordered lists are like unordered lists, except that each list item is numbered. They're useful when you need to list different steps in a process or rank items for first to last. You can create the ordered list with the OL tag and then add individual list items to the list using LI tags. The output will look like this. Okay, let's quickly move on. Can the li element contain content other than text? Yes, we can. The, uh, the li element, the list element can contain any element which is valid within a body tag. This means that we can have lists of videos, images, songs, hyperlinks, or any combination thereof. In fact, we can even have lists of lists. Can we only display either numbers or bullet point lists? With a little CSS, we can get more creative with our list styles. Take a look at the CSS property list style type with Mozilla Docs for an example of some of the marker types available. Okay. Is there a way to increase the space between the number and the text of each list? Yes, there is a way to do that. We can use CSS to target the list elements and then apply some left padding to them. Okay. Interesting to know. Okay, let's move on to images. All of the elements you've learned about so far, headings, paragraphs, lists, and spans, share one thing in common. They're composed entirely of text. What if you want to add content to your web page that isn't composed of text, like images? The IMG tag allows you to add an image to a web page. Most elements require both opening and closing tags, but the IMG tag is a self-closing tag. Note that the end of the IMG tag has a forward slash. Self-closing tags may include or, or omit the final slash. Both will render properly. Both will render properly. Sorry, I was just processing that in my brain as I was reading it. The IMG tag has a required attribute called SRC. The SRC attribute must be set to the image's source or the location of the image. In this case, the value of the source must be the uniform resource locator URL of the image. 
A URL is the web address or local address where a file is stored. Okay, let's complete these instructions. Image alt. Part of being an exceptional web developer is making your site accessible to users of all backgrounds. In order to make the web more inclusive, we need to consider what happens when assistive technologies such as screen readers come across image tags. Hopefully screen readers can read better than me. Um, the alt attribute, which means alternative text, brings meaning to the images on our sites. The alt attribute can be added to the image tag just like the source attribute. The value of the alt should be a description of the image. The alt attribute also serves the following purposes. If an image fails to load on a web page, a user can mouse over the area originally intended for the image and read a brief description of the image. This is made possible by the description you provide in the alt attribute. Visually impaired users often browse the web with the aid of screen reading software. When you include the alt attribute, the screen reading software can read the image's description out loud to the visually impaired user. The alt attribute also plays a role in search engine optimization, SEO, because search engines cannot see the images on websites as they crawl the internet. Having descriptive alt attributes can improve the ranking of your site. If the image on the web page is not one that conveys any meaningful information to a user, visually impaired or otherwise, the alt attribute should be left empty. videos. In addition to images, HTML also supports displaying videos like the IMG tag. The video tag requires a source attribute with a link to the video source. Unlike the IMG tag, however, the video element requires an opening and closing tag. In this example, the video source is myvideo.mp4. The source can be a video file that is hosted alongside your web pages or a URL that points to a video file hosted on another web page. After the source attribute, the width and height attributes are used to set the size of the video displayed in the browser. The controls attribute instructs the browser to include basic video controls, pause, play and skip. The text video not supported between opening and closing video tags will only be displayed if the browser is unable to load the video. Okay, let's run through these instructions. That's it, we've now added a video to our first web page. Congratulations on completing the first lesson of HTML. You are well on your way to becoming a skilled web developer. Let's review what you've learned so far. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and is used to create the structure and content of a web page. Most HTML elements contain opening and closing tags with raw text or other HTML tags between them. HTML elements can be nested inside other elements. The enclosed element is the child of the enclosing parent element. Any visible content should be placed within the opening and closing body tags. Headings and subheadings, H1 to H6 tags, are used to enlarge text. 
paragraph, span and div tags specify text or blocks. The M and strong tags are used to emphasize text. Line breaks are created with the BR tag. Ordered lists are numbered and unordered lists are bulleted. Images and videos can be added by linking to an existing source. Well, that's it. Thank you guys for following along with me as I refresh my skills in HTML and go over the basics. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.